Welcome everyone to another product breakdown and this time we are checking out this guy. This is the Elegoo Centauri Carbon. It is a direct competitor to the X1C except the price on this thing compared to all of the other copycats is insane. This is now 350 euro in the shop compared to the X1C's 1158 euro now. How? So this must be a crap printer, right? Let's get into it. But before we do, I just want to mention that if you want one of these printers for free, you have a chance to get one. So we're going to give one of these away to one of you. So if you want to find out how to do that, stay tuned to the end of the video. We'll tell you. Okay, let's get back to it. So the Elegoo Centauri Carbon has a build volume of 256 by 256 by 256. Sounds familiar? You thinking what I'm thinking? Let's try it. Okay, not exactly the same, but definitely usable. So we have a hot end that goes up to 320 degrees. It is a hardened steel nozzle and the bed goes up to 110 degrees. So we're, we're almost reaching more engineering type materials with this. Almost. We got big 60 millimeter steppers for the X and Y motion that provide a max speed of 500 millimeters per second and 20k acceleration. And that hot end can print up to 32 millimeters cubed per second. Pretty standard in terms of current printers. The printer is fully enclosed with an air filter and an auxiliary fan. This time it's at the back rather than the side. And there is also a 5020 fan on the print head. There is also a camera in the chamber to keep an eye on prints. So obviously this printer is designed to compete with the X and P series from Bamboo Lab. And at that price point, does it do it? It totally slaughters it. But feature wise, that's well, a little bit different. So obviously you don't see any sort of AMS type thing in front of me right now. Yeah, this printer doesn't have multicolor yet. It does have a cutter built into the print head and there is a poop shoot at the back, uh, but there is no multicolor unit yet. Elgu have confirmed that there is going to be one, hopefully in Q3 of this year, we hope. Elgu announced this printer in June last year at TCT. And yeah, it was supposed to be released before September last year. Obviously that didn't happen, but we have it now, but without the multicolor device. I am hoping there is not going to be a delay. We are really hoping that there is going to be one released in Q3. There are two big things I noticed about this printer when first testing it. One, the light in the chamber is woefully weak. In case you can't tell, it's on right now. Most printers have a light where you don't really need to open the door to see through. You can't do that with this printer. You have to open the door to check on it. And via the slicer, you don't have the best view on the camera. If you were to do a time lapse with this camera, you probably need some extra lighting to make it look nice. The other thing is it's, it's actually a bit loud. So I had some issues first with printing PLA. There was some issues with overhangs and I turned up the auxiliary fan to full to compensate for this. And when you do have the auxiliary fan up to the max, it is a bit loud. This is how loud it is with the door and the lid closed. And without, this is what it's like. Going back to the slicer, the interface is minimalist, let's say. There is not a whole lot to change or even view here, but I am happy to say that this printer is now fully usable with Orca slicer. So if you want to use that, then just go for it. Firmware, however, is locked out, at least right now it's locked out. I was hoping to have Clipper on this printer, given Elgoo's history with Clipper on their printers, but unfortunately, no. Right now, it is locked out. Leveling works fine, but because of the Slicer's minimalist device page, uh, you don't see a, a bed mesh. There is an auto Z offset with this printer, and that works beautifully with PLA. However, with other filaments, I did have to do some minor Z offset changes. Filament loading is good, and we do have a run out detector built into the side here. But just like a lot of printers, the PTFE has a pretty sharp bend just before the hot end. Depending on where the printhead is as you load filament, it can be better or worse. But when you do a load up sequence, the printhead parks here and it can be a bit tricky to put in filament. On some occasions, I have had to adjust the PTFE angle to load filament. No filament breakages yet, except for one filament, but we'll get to that. Power loss recovery works. We tried it accidentally. There was a neighborhood blackout, and when we came back, the printer restarted, and it prompted to continue, and I pressed continue, and it continued really well. Unfortunately, 
that blackout happened over the weekend and the bed had cooled quite a lot, obviously. So on Monday when I did continue it, uh, it continued until the model fell off the PEI. So that is good and, and bad, I guess. The PEI sheet is double-sided. It has a textured side and a very finely textured side. There is great adhesion during printing with ABS-2, and when it cools, your print will effortlessly pop off. Great in that sense, not so great during a power outage. The print head cover pops off really easily. It is actually just held in with magnets. The hot end seems like it will be released as a one-part swap all. However, I have seen someone online already tear down the hot end. The link is down below and it looks like the nozzle is actually removable. Unfortunately, it seems like a new design, like a volcano, but not quite a volcano. So I don't think you'll be able to get it from anyone besides Elgu and distributors in the near future. The touchscreen is easy to navigate and interact with. It is not super detailed, it has what you need, and you can update and do leveling, PID, and input shaping calibration via it. Okay, let's talk about speed and quality. After using this for a little while, I can say that I couldn't quite push this to X1 speeds. I did have some issues with PLA with overhangs. Now, it, it wasn't really that much. You can see right here on our first prints on PLA, and yeah, there is a slight issue with overhangs. But that's really it in terms of high quality at high speed. I just changed the overhang speed settings and I've been using that profile ever since with PLA and the prints are impeccable. For this price and that level of quality, it's awesome. As you can see from the prints in PLA, they are really awesome. I can't see any major problem with these. What about ABS or ASA? Well, close to perfection, actually. This is an ABS print and it is spectacular. ASA also came out really well. There was no problems with adhesion with ABS or ASA. This printer does not have a heated chamber. However, the chamber temperature can get up to almost 50 degrees. So that's more than sufficient for ABS and ASA. Also, TPU came out pretty well. Okay, what about tougher filament? So. For this, I really wanted to challenge this guy, so I brought out the big guns. This is Polymaker's Fibron PPS CF10. It is one of the hardiest filaments we have in the shop and has a whopping heat resistance of over 250 degrees. It is flame retardant, resistant to solvents, sounds like metal when you clink the parts together. It's just a really, really strong filament. It is generally printed on printers that have heated build chambers and cost two or three times as much as the Centauri Carbon. Normally you print this between 320 and 350 degrees. Can this print it? Yep. I printed this Orca cube and it came out pretty decently. The only issue I had with this was the sharp angle of the PTFE. I couldn't make it work, so I bypassed the PTFE altogether to print this. If any of you have worked with this filament before, you know how brittle it is. It's way more brittle than any other carbon fiber filament. Also, this is not a filament that likes overhangs, as you can see from the relatively mild overhangs on the Orca Cube. Nevertheless, it is more than a passable print. We teased the carbon a couple of weeks ago and asked you guys if you had any questions, and you did. So first of all, does this have a carbon filter? No, not exactly, but it does have a nano mineral crystal filter, whatever that is, probably zeolite. Someone asked if you could fit a bento box filter or, or similar filter in the chamber, and yeah, you probably could. There's about a 60 to 70 millimeter gap between the heated bed and the chamber wall. So you could technically fit something on the side. With other printers, that's actually quite difficult because normally the auxiliary fan is on the side. However, with this printer, it is at the back. And with other printers, you wouldn't be able to fit the filter at the back anyway because there's a lead screw there. So moving the auxiliary fan to the back is actually a pretty good move in terms of if you wanted to mod something inside the chamber. Whether you could fit a heated chamber mod in here, well, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know, because the motors on this printer might have issues with higher temperatures, maybe. If anyone wants to know exactly about this, then just let us know, we'll look it up for you. I have seen some people complain that the bed heats up pretty slowly. I actually haven't had this problem at all. And some people have said that there are issues because there is an M140 command in the start G code instead of the M190 command. M140 doesn't wait for the bed temp to hit the desired temperature before printing. It just heats up and lets all of the other subsequent commands continue. 
I actually didn't have a problem with this, but let's just test it out to see how long it can get to PLA and ABS temperatures. So for 3 d Jake ABS, that is 260 on the hot end and 100 on the bed, and our Eco PLA is 220 on the hot end and 60 on the bed. For reference, an X1C heats up to 60 degrees in 38 seconds and 100 degrees in 1 minute 30 seconds. There are a couple of other things about this printer that bothered me a little. So first of all, the extrude and retract load unload filament type command via the touchscreen, sometimes uh, that just doesn't work. If you have used that feature once and then you print something and then you want to use that feature again, it doesn't give you the option. It's just not responsive. You need to heat up the hot end and then push the extruder move button until it's released or just restart the printer. The other thing is the leveling can be just a tiny bit slow. So I have noticed during the leveling process, normally there's just two probes per leveling point. However, sometimes there's six or seven. It's kind of weird. It delays it slightly, but not like a huge amount. So it's, it's a minimal problem. So in conclusion, there are definitely a few little quirks with this printer, that is for sure. Um, rather minuscule, I must say, but even with those, uh, at this price, this quality, this functionality, this is a great printer and we're having wonderful results with PLA, ABS, ASA, TPU, and even bloody PPSCF10. We're getting great results across the board and this printer is cheap. It's 350 euro in the shop right now. And if that is too much for you, there is also the regular Centauri, which is just a budgeted version of this without the enclosure and a few other little features. And that is only 250 euro. The Carbon is a good printer, but at this price, it's a great printer. And this is something that I would happily recommend to a beginner as well. All right, so you want one of these for free? Let's get into that. To enter our giveaway, all you need to do is join our Discord and click on participate. And that's it. In one week's time, we will announce a winner. So good luck to you all. If you guys want to ask us any questions about the Centauri Carbon, then you may do so down below. And if you didn't know, we also have a Discord server where you can talk to us and everyone else about all things 3D printers. And we'll see you guys next time. Later. Thank you.